John Reeves. Ah! How's it going, fam? Tonight, or today, I guess, this afternoon, it's something. We normally do these at night, but we have a freaking awesome guest tonight. One Word Podcast, we have the lead singer of Chimera, Mark Hunter, also a freaking ancient astronaut theorist, as we will soon learn, <laughs> and uh, freaking all-around awesome guy. He's a photographer, he's a Funko Pop fanatic, a movie buff, and a Twitch streamer. So, without any further ado, give it up. For Mark Hunter. <laughs> In the freaking wig. Yes. Oh, what's going on. Wig. What are you talking about? <laughs> You've grown your hair out. This isn't a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got on your stream the other day and uh got on your stream and I saw you in a powdered wig wrapping some freaking Wu Tang clan. And I was like, the internet is my favorite creation <laughs> in the Hell history. Yeah. It was gold. It was gold. Yeah, we we have a we have a good time over on Twitch. One second, because this thing is actually pretty itchy <laughs> and annoying. But, you know, I gotta make the people happy. Heck yeah, uh, man! I appreciate it, dude. <laughs> dun dun dun. Yeah. Nicely done, man. Yeah, so how's my hair look? Okay. It's good. It's good. It's all yeah, right. Nicely done, uh, yeah, sir. Yeah, so it's, we have a good time over on Twitch and the uh, subscribers. Uh, we have like little challenges, right? To try to get mm. to a certain amount of subscribers. And when I hit 150, yeah, it was something I had to stream in a powdered wig. <laughs> and I had to uh, sing, rap some Wu Tang Clan in a powdered wig. Oh my God. So, yeah. uh, it's pretty perfect, that, man. And then uh, now it turned into 200. I have to go wear an entire full on colonial outfit and go to Chick fil A and I order food. <laughs> So Chick Fil A oh, is the one that won last night. Nicely done, yeah, sir. Chick Fil A won. Yeah, out of all the restaurants, um, <laughs> they want me to go to Chick Fil A. You in a and, like? Uh, you're going full colonial. Full on, like George Washington, <laughs> and but they want me buy the shoes too, and they're like, "I oh, should just wear some of your Jordans." See, yeah, modern Jordans. That's perfect. That's perfect. Jordans with full on uh, George Washington clothing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that would be, be good. Hey, be anything good. to please the people, right? Right. Yes. Well, man, since we're already on the topic of uh, of Twitch, how did you get started on here? Like, what what was like the driving factor to get you onto Twitch? You know, sometimes you get a seed planted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mine, a uh, buddy is a streamer. Um, his name's Johnny Rocker, and mm -hmm. He, uh, he was just in my head. We had met at the mall, mm -hmm. and just, we were just hanging out, and he said he was going to do it. Yeah. It was more for, like, gamers, and I don't really – I'm not a gamer. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of was like, yeah, I don't know that that's my scene. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. Then a couple months ago, I start seeing some of the people I follow on Twitter – industry that i became friends with over the years mm -hmm. and they're posting clips of you know what they've been doing on twitch and i'm like man that looks like a lot of fun it's not just gamers now like i see yeah. musicians playing stuff i see the singer of all that remains phil he's like mm -hmm. doing songs and yeah trivium guys are on there so i just kind of got fomo a little bit there and i'm like so I to uh phil from all that remains and i asked him like hey man like I don't know if it's me or not, but I just kind of want to rap about it and mm -hmm. throw out what I'm thinking to see if it's something that I should do or not. And yeah, he he was just very helpful in making me understand and realize that it really doesn't matter what you do on on this platform. You know, yeah. it used to be a little bit more about gaming and everything, but um, more about uh, having a yeah on there. So I kind of do a little bit of everything that I would normally do at my house mm -hmm. anyway. So. Yeah, and honestly, I think like like you said back in the day, it kind of used to just be a gaming platform. But now, the more that I see, like when you were talking about Trivium, uh, Matt Heafy's on here, uh, Phil from All That Remains is on here. There's a lot of musicians now, and do you feel like it's because of? Do you feel like this would have naturally happened, or do you think that because of the coronavirus and with like the live shows and the changing of the music industry, do you feel like this is kind of like it's been funneled here? I think it's a mixture of the two honestly like i 
that the way concerts might go in the future is a way of virtual mm -hmm. just because that's just the way things are heading right we put yeah. we want to have virtual reality video games mm -hmm. why not virtual reality concerts like yeah. i just figured that that's going to be something that happens anytime now yeah uh, so i kind of figured we would be doing something in the world of streaming and or online in the future but it's probably not this quick right? yeah I think yeah that might be the result of covid Mm -hmm. And yeah, about musicians on there, and, and now once I'm on there, I discover there's so many more musicians out there, uh, on there, and then there's a whole bunch of a world of musicians I've never heard of, and that's part of the fun of Twitch too, is we, we discover like today, the past two days we've ra we've raided mm -hmm. people I've heard of, right? So yeah. I'm like, all right, let's just go into this stranger's room and crash their party. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Actually, we've done that three times now, and that has been like the most fun so far because we discover like all these mm. talented people that we never knew existed before and yeah. it's just a lot of fun that's uh, one of my favorite things as a streamer is to raid out afterwards just to see people like especially man my god can you imagine like do you go into uh for you do you go into like the music category and find people there i saw you posted that guitar guy just shredding one of your songs dude <laughs> yes yeah, so that was just like you know, on the left hand side of the video game or video game. <laughs> left side of the Twitch stream you have like suggested people that mm -hmm. are online and so I'm just like, Okay, uh, who's yeah. this guy or who's this girl, mm -hmm. right? And just like click on it and like okay like something fun that we could get into. Yeah. And when I when I saw that channel this morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> sees this guy like Bleh! He was destroying it, dude. Some alien playing guitar. Yeah. Here, so let's go. Let's go check him out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, discover a lot of cool stuff. I think as far as novelty is concerned and mm -hmm. new content and unlimited possibilities, I look at it as like a future of reality TV in the sense that it's yeah. more like interactive reality TV in a weird way. Yeah. And whatever your reality is, I guess that's. Uh, Oh, I heard it described too by uh, somebody as a treehouse. I'm like, yeah, or treehouse club. I'm like, hmm, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> like way that. of putting it too. Yeah, I think one thing that I really that's like funny. about it, Mega Death Buddy. <laughs> Mega. <I'm sorry. laughs> no. I think one thing that I really like about it is like, it gives the control to to you. You know, like the streamer has control of what their content is. I mean, to a certain extent, I guess, as long as you're not breaking TOS or whatever. But like, there's political podcasts that are on here there's musicians doing like doing music like playing performing their songs there's i mean it goes all over the place wow uh bianca savage said what's in the cup <laughs> what you drinking Bean up in the cup you know that scissor <laughs> he got some, some of that and some promethazine <laughs> with a jolly rancher uh, <laughs> yes. coffee. and it's shaking coffee. it up <laughs> yes it's coffee oh. <laughs> appreciate it thank you very much Heck yep. So Stream, I've got it up. I can see the chat. Oh, nice. There you go. Well, if you anytime you want to jump in, if you want to talk to them as well too, they would definitely appreciate that, man. We've got some fans. I'm done talking to them. I'm done talking to them. It's no over. more chat. Talk, <laughs> talk to the hand. Uh, <laughs> well, man, let's get into if you're cool with this. Uh, starting out with Chimera, like how did how did it begin for you? I know you were in some local bands before you actually started chimera i think and um yeah it all started in the womb <laughs> i was burst into this <laughs> nice i saw a bright light coming out of a tunnel <laughs> the doctor slapped me and um, then, yeah <laughs> a hardcore band and you know just starting in in my high school years i started mm -hmm. playing in bands and from just anything i can be around any of the musicians in school I wanted to kind of team up with them and see what they were about and watch their band or maybe I jammed with their band and mm -hmm. eventually started my own bands and uh, the serious band I did was a band called uh, Skip Line and we were a hardcore band and mm -hmm. we got to play with some um, international acts and you know kind of that one above just staying in the practice space kind of band yeah right? yeah so we uh, actually went out and played shows and made demos and tapes mm -hmm. and cassettes and stuff to sell broke up mainly due to because our first world tour we got robbed not world tour i Jesus. mean it was our first 
out of town. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was we, say, did a, we did a weekend show. Just a tiny a band tour. doing a world Two tour. Shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is exaggeration extreme? <laughs> yeah, we were in this massive tour. We were out with Kiss. Yeah, you know. You heard of them? We were. They were opening up for us. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it was more or less like two shows, and the second one we got robbed on. Oh and yeah. They stole our van with all mm. of our gear, and we had to get a ride home from some fans. Oh my all god. The way from Rhode Island, and that was the end of that, right? Ouch. Yeah. So, um, first started as a result of. We kind of we did like a reunion show, even though we'd only been broken up for like a year. Yeah. Uh, we did a reunion show, and that was with a band that was also popular in our hometown named Ascension. Really? Uh, we kind of broke up. We broke up, and the bass player of that band, Jason Hagar, reached out to me, and he's like, hey, man, that reunion show was a lot of fun. You're not doing Chimera. I'm not doing Ascension. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do band together? And I'm like... You know, it's a lot of sense. Yeah. So we kind of started looking for musicians, and mm. uh, long story short, you know, we wound up uh, with uh, Rob Arnold, Andals, me, yes, Jason dude. Hagar, and our original bass player was um, uh, Andrew Ermlich. We called him AE. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, we wound up recording our first demo in history. Yeah. How, okay, how does it go from local band getting robbed their first concert out to like playing in front of thousands of people and uh and getting signed to roadrunner and and just that whole experience does it like was there a time with chimera where y'all were like that local band and then you remember it just like boom like we're here was was there a progression like that we yeah we definitely so to speak right you know um go through the local ropes Mm -hmm. and but we we just had the slight slight advantage just because uh jason and i the two of us were were from established hardcore Mm -hmm. bands in the scene so people just out of curiosity wanted to check that out Mm -hmm. right off the bat yeah so they had a slight advantage there and we had is we stayed in the practice space a good few months i want to say mm-hmm. writing before we ever played our first live show oh there you go um it, it i just think that like attitude a that we wanted to succeed mm-hmm. we oozed it right like we yeah it was even like we need text our first show like so we we, we look like we mean business yeah we, we just project that aura ridiculous idea because these are like our friends and they don't know the first thing about setting up guitar yeah. equipment. <laughs> it was a disaster to have these dudes on the stage, right? Uh, oh, yeah. The show was with National X. We got to play with Napalm Death. Oh, and damn. And Today is the Day. And nice. It was like one of those like selling ticket things, right? Mm-hmm. You sell your tickets and if you get enough, you know, whoever sells the most gets the yeah. better like, spot, mm-hmm. right? So. We won that day, so because we had a lot of friends, we were just out of high school. For the, yeah, you know, some of us were just out, and some of us were only like a couple years out. So we still had that high school pull <laughs> that helps you know yeah. a lot of young bands out for sure. Yeah, it, really no, like it was just a lot of hard work and attitude, and we tried to get on every good show. We tried mm-hmm. to make the best decisions that we could, and uh, we just had a little bit of an advantage because we had worked really hard in other previous bands for years. Mm-hmm. You know, we had got gone up had already been in local bands and gone through the ringer and we knew like what yeah. to avoid and what to like go after mm-hmm. so i think that like you know you just have to pay your dues yeah <laughs> that's really well it comes i could have answered it by that we paid <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what like honestly i don't feel like a lot of people understand how much time went into it before even y'all's first like pass out of existence like people you know what I mean? Like how, people probably they're like, oh, that was their first album, and they didn't know how long you'd actually been grinding before that. So, I mean, I know me as a kid, like I, I first got into uh, Impossibility of Reason. That was the first album that I heard of y'all's, and I saw y'all play, and then I went back and got uh, Pass Out, and I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people don't see that grind. Like I never knew that you know how long y'all had been playing before you even came out with your first EP. But and then people hear these things like uh you know overnight success and like 
and stuff like that. They're like, they don't understand, you know? It's like, probably like you, I, I would consider my, my original initial journey as a musician, mm -hmm. you know, starting off playing drums in my garage and as yeah. like a 13, 14 year old kid. <laughs> and then moving up to being able to be a tech for Jim's band who eventually winds up asking me to be in their band. Yeah. And then just moving forward and forward and forward. So it's a long journey. By the time we're like putting out our first album, it's probably I've been trying to be a musician in some capacity for a decade already. At yeah. This point. Damn. See, that's awesome. Uh, Mr. Bagel Fart, which wins for the most unique name of the day. <laughs> Freaking Dang, love that I'm guy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Bagel farts are the worst. Okay. <laughs> but uh, he said, have you ever played a show with Sea of Treachery? I, I, I have not. Uh, I haven't even heard of the group. Never um, heard of them. Yeah. There it is. They might be a little bit after our time. Yeah. Um. So let's see here. Uh, oh, go on. I'm sorry. asks here about playing in front of billions of people. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That one show <laughs> you played. I can tell you. <laughs> Yeah, man. What's it like walking out on stage for going from like smaller clubs to walking out in front of like uh, sold out shows, like massive concerts? How does it feel going from one to the other? Definitely a trip, right? I mean, I think that when you're first starting out in like a local band and like, you know, it's like you on stage and then you look out in the audience and it's like four friends. Like the other bands that are playing <laughs> like, that show. <laughs> And that yeah, they're there too, and they're not even paying attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, those shows are rough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to learn how to entertain those people. And I think once you learn how to entertain those people, by the time you get to a larger audience, you're kind of seasoned. Yeah. But I'm not going to say that that's not intimidating either, though, because some of the larger audiences we played in front of, some of the biggest ones in the beginning of our career was mm -hmm. the audience for Slayer. And like, oh they were God. notoriously <laughs> yeah. horrible to their opening <laughs> acts. <And> so yeah. <laughs> we like, uh, the show was Slayer and there was uh, four or 5,000 people there and like the song, the first song ends and it was just complete silence. You oh would have thought God. you were playing in Japan or something because yeah. the Japanese crowds are silent on mm -hmm. purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But not Chicago. They were just like, man, y'all suck. Uh, <laughs> what is this? So, well, I mean – so. Oh, go on. Go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean eventually you, you just get used to it. And mm. uh, the biggest crowd I, we ever played in front of was at Download Festival mm. in England. And who knows what the real number was, but uh, it was – orienting where you almost have like weird walleye vision from like the movie hot shots <laughs> yeah you know, like it's just like whoa this is just so you i was only able to like focus on a little patch yeah because everything else was almost like a blur that is insane because it was so many people <clears throat> so yeah you just kind of have to focus on that little bit and that yeah. almost becomes like you know the club show <laughs> mm -hmm. i heard somewhere that uh yeah. your your mind can't tell the difference or it can't really see visually the difference between i think it was like 500 cats and 5,000 cats, like your brain can't comprehend, like if there's that many, might have been that going on. But <laughs> it, it, it's very, it's very bizarre. Yeah. Like I can describe it as like walleye vision or, you know, just weird distorted perception. Yeah. The best thing I could say. Um, but also the biggest, you know, I'll tell you the bigger the crowd, the bigger the adrenaline rush, mm -hmm. especially if they're, they're a lot, you know, hype. Yeah, well, and speaking of which, the Wall of Death that, I mean, what was the biggest, did y'all have a Wall of Death to download that year? Like that, the big show you're I'm talking about? Sure we did, we had Dude. to have, but um, <laughs> we uh, we were we were doing that a lot in 2003 and 2004, mm -hmm. so a lot of the bigger festivals we hit there, I would say the biggest one was maybe 25,000 people that we did oh that with. Oh my god. There was, like a lot of these festivals, they'll put like a barricade in the middle, uh -huh. so you have to like kind of do two of them, one on yeah. each side, <laughs> uh, but then like some of them, I think it was with Full Force Festival, that's a pretty big yeah, one, yeah. whatever that capacity would have been at, on a main stage mm -hmm. that's probably one of the biggest ones we did that's nuts man i could only imagine i uh i don't know i've been in many wall of death since then and like i don't know they they're always fun but i imagine you said twenty five thousand people around about somewhere in there that's like 
probably putting like 300 to shame. Like movies like that where they're just clashing into each other. If if the chat doesn't know what a wall of death is, like you should Google that. Braveheart, yeah, like it's 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 insane. Yeah, how did you? It looks I, like Lord of the Rings movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. How did you come up with the idea of like let's split it up and let's just? I mean, you're pretty much you're coined the Metal Moses for like I I do you do you feel like you invented it or was it something that you really popularized? Or the popularization, I saw a couple variations of it just mm -hmm. coming up in the hardcore scene. Uh, saw that version, but then I also saw saw one where the crowd would take it. You know, the, all, the entire back audience of the crowd would lock mm -hmm. arms oh my God. and then run to the front of the stage and, like, smash into people that way. <laughs> uh. Uh, parting of the Sea was a lot nicer. <laughs> so yeah. um, when to the metal scene, that really didn't – hadn't been seen before because, you know, a lot of these hardcore shows, it's you're playing some of them 200 people, 150, but then you get to these metal shows where there's a couple thousand and you mm -hmm. do that. It's like, whoa. So I more yeah. popularized it. And like news people called me Metal Moses because yeah. it's more like I, I like they called it like parting the, the Red Sea. <laughs> they didn't know how to describe it. Mm -hmm. um, so you just call it, uh, you know, the, the look like I I was Moses and I commanded the Red Sea to part. And then it, you know, and then it clashed again. So yeah, I stuck with that because it was a funny like. Oh, man metal moses that's a pretty funny name <laughs> it's a pretty so awesome that, name that's dude. um yeah you sh have you have you gone I just, I in halloween it. as uh as moses you should go one day as moses for halloween if you haven't yet maybe you could do like a like i a, haven't that's a that's a great idea boom just start that's splitting a, people yeah. <laughs> everywhere you go nice man i tried to split my twitch chat the other night i don't know if it worked though <laughs> you just gotta imagine they're leaving leaving the computer for a second um, you've, I mean, the dehumanizing process. So I was like, all right, everybody in the, in the Twitch chat, just you know, <laughs> both, motherfuckers on the left. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if we're allowed to swear in here. But yeah. Yeah. Good for anyway, you. on the right. <laughs> but anyways, uh, what, I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Well, not like, uh, so Chimera, the name obviously is a combination of a lot of, uh, like, like a multi-form creature and with your band, it's the same. I mean, you guys had. A lot of different influences but like you said you were opening up for slayer was one of your first really really big uh concerts or one of your first big tours in slayer i mean massive massive band but your style is a lot different i mean have you like what's the most i guess contrasting bands that you've toured with just since they might not have known who to put you with that was a kind of a situation gray area band for a little bit of time because mm -hmm. pass out had like a new metal vibe yeah but it was so heavy enough to be out with slayer mm -hmm. and then like impossibility they were trying to help us shed any of that new metal stuff mm -hmm. because 2003 it's like no 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 we don't want to talk about new metal anymore um yeah they we definitely had some odd pairings uh Factory 81 in us, it was weird. Yeah. Um, they kind of sounded more like a Deftonesy tool band. Mm -hmm. And that was the first bands they put us out with. And we, it was weird. Um, not somebody, not they, nothing against that band. It was just more or less yeah. like, huh, you know, like, okay, well, not necessarily what we envisioned, like mm -hmm. the types of bands we wanted to go out with. And yeah. then, um, but then we it started making more sense once we got on the tour because it was like okay these guys have like a lot of some fan base but they don't know who we are mm -hmm. so that's interesting um, so it turned out to be pretty pretty beneficial but then they getting us you know with the bands like Machine Head Fear Factory Slayer that yeah. stuff makes more sense right mm -hmm. so I'd say just the weirdest pairing. Um, and that's not really up to the, anyone's yeah. control. That's more or less like certain countries will have different ideas of what a festival of music is about, where like maybe you go to France and it's Hellfest and it's all metal and hardcore and doom and stoner metal and sludge. And it's all kind of in that umbrella. Yeah. But then we'll play like a festival in Finland mm -hmm. and it's us, 50 Cent, 
uh, <laughs> dude, House was on it. Tori Amos, like, oh what? my god, yeah, <laughs> you know, like that's a festival, right? Gojira, but dude, then yes. you know, he sent like, okay, <laughs> y'all, y- 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 um. So, did y'all get like band pictures with them, like just some metal heads and then Fifty Cent? <laughs> yeah, it was it was before that era, you know, or right before that era of yeah, D Delicious. Us getting paired with a- Asking Alexandria was way weird. Um, I would imagine, yeah. Work too, like we were able to win that crowd over many a night, and then mm-hmm. so our farm club experience was surreal because that paired us with mandy moore and incubus <laughs> i don't think any weirder than that yeah that would definitely be like uh if i can go catch mandy moore play on one stage and then go over and see chimera i'm like what is happening in my life farm club farm club it was the same stage the same like stage. we were like we that, so this was our first tv national tv <laughs> appearance it was like us <laughs> Then the stage like rotates and like yeah. Incubus comes out and you're like, what? Oh and then the rotates again and it's like <laughs> Mandy Moore comes out. <laughs> nice. Kind of like that uh, live After with Jules finish. Holland type thing. Like, have you ever seen that? Jules Holland? It was a TV. Kind of like that? I have, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a show that was on USA Network in America for a while where they had um, young and upcoming acts perform with national acts on mm-hmm. TV. And that there were sucks. millions of people that watched it, but it yeah. wasn't necessarily live. It's pre-taped. I think it, we taped it in maybe summer and it came mm-hmm. out, you know, in October kind of thing. Yeah. But it was great. It really helped push our – it really helped push our band, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a whole new audience that's still with us to this day. And – I agree. Uh, King Edward in here talking about Run DMC and Aerosmith. And, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think those that, that's a festival to me. I want to see a variety of yeah. bands. It's cool to go to an all metal festival. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. But like, I grew up going to like Lollapalooza. I grew up yeah. going to that's like a whole Alice in Chains mm-hmm. tool. But then there's Arrested Development was on the show, or maybe the one year's Ice Cube, one year's Ice T. Mm-hmm. So they would be in hip hop acts and funk acts and metal and grunge and alternative rock like that's a cool festival idea for me yeah there's a bonnaroo here in uh in tennessee where i live and like they have i've seen insane different change-ups of bands like avid brothers will play and then there's like freaking it, it's been nuts it's been nuts but i think that's a good yeah, idea though I perfect mean, honestly, example yeah um well let's see oh uh you've toured a few times with uh bands like Every time I die as well too. And have you ever been on one of the episodes of Shit Happens that they've done, or were you were you touring with them whenever they were doing that? It was just like right after. So I think the last time we toured with them would have been in two thousand and seven. Mm-hmm. So it's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, before that, though, we had done a few tours with them and shared a bus with them. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit past uh, past uh, our hang out but um jordan mm-hmm. but did our chimera christmas artwork for our reunion yeah. show so we still have a in touch with them here and there i actually have that uh that poster hanging up in my podcast studio i've got a uh, it's like the like the chimera with the suit on like it was a christmas one i think right yeah it's coming out of the grave yeah yeah, yeah. it's so funny man well who's one of your favorite and from bands? every time i die's artwork right he uh i don't he's got such a unique style to it like i just i don't know i like that style um what would you say is one of your favorite bands that you've toured with and then do y'all have any random tour rituals or did y'all have random tour rituals i think for like the tour rituals changed per tour you know it's like (laughs) depending on the tour what was going to be the ritual yeah yeah was it pressing tour and we were going to just take <laughs> sleeping pills the whole time or was it a fun tour <laughs> do some ambient racing on um, stage yeah no actually it was tylenol pm but close enough right um yeah uh, like just wake up and take a tylenol pm like get me out of this world <laughs> um, that's pressing the tour is yeah so no uh rituals just no not really um just wanting prepared you know making sure we re- we're well well rehearsed and yeah. that you know we were very particular on making sure all the details were finalized because there's nothing worse than you know 
people just let people do everything for them and then they just show up and they're like, hey, we're here. Mm. We were very hands-on and particular and like, no, we don't want this flight. No, no one's going to want to get up at 6 a.m. We got to take this. Yeah. <laughs> so we're so yeah. neurotic about it, right? Like yeah. every little detail to make dudes happy. It's not mm. easy. <laughs> so uh, that would be the ritual is like making sure we get everything as possibly prepared that we can so yeah. we can walk into it as relaxed as we can and with as little hiccup as possible. But of course, it never works out our way. And I loved touring with Slipknot. I thought I think that was my favorite tour of all time. <laughs> Slipknot. And I just had such a great time with them, mm -hmm. you know, becoming friends with the band. And then the shows were just some of our career. Like, it's going to be hard to, like, top those yeah. um, for me. You know, they were coming out, what, on volume three with them. Oh, damn. So uh, it was a mixture of we would play some like intimate venues mm -hmm. like you know maybe like 12 1500 seater all the way up to like maybe a 5 or 6 so yeah. it wasn't one of their arena tours so mm -hmm. i mean it was even more in because it's you know you're packed in with yeah rabid people you yeah know? there's some crazy so slip that bands man good. i think like one of the most brutal concerts i've ever been to was a uh well it was a an Ozfest that they headlined like the second stage i think and I like looked down and I was stepping on like four or five people, but there was like a massive crowd just like pushing me. There's like nothing I could do. It was like a few people back from the front. It was ridiculous, man. But their their concerts are crazy. And most of the time and they're I, like, you see somebody laying down, pick them up. Like it was out the window, dude. It was just, it was a mess. People on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like an ocean of people. I was floating over. It was nuts. But, uh, King Edward wants to know if we ever played at CBGB. Yes, we did. That's actually one of the first places Roadrunner saw us and really? decided to sign us. Um, and the biggest takeaway I have about that was how toilet was. <laughs> it's like it felt like the bathroom from Candyman. If you've ever seen that movie, Jesus. it's just like whoa, <laughs> this is just too much. Yeah, I did. Those cool. things I'd like, I didn't even want to pee in the yeah. bathroom. But uh, anyway, it was a great <laughs> show, and it was legendary to be there, and I was so, you know, obviously excited to be there. Yeah. But unfortunately, my biggest takeaway is it was a horrible toilet. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad if you remember the uh, toilet. The things people remember, right? <laughs> yeah, the things people remember. It's never the good toilets either. Like, will you remember the time that you're like, this bathroom's really clean. I like how clean this bathroom is. It's like it's the the crappy toilet. Absolutely remember that. You absolutely <laughs> do. You remember both. There you go, dude. Nice. It's the best yeah. best bathroom venue is. In, um, I'm gonna write this on you. On a blank, Vancouver, Vancouver. Uh, uh, is what is the venue called in Vancouver that we would always play? I'm gonna have to look it up. I hate to have to Google <laughs> on while we're talking. Oh, but. you got it, man. Um, but yeah, so anyway, while I'm looking it up, I'll just describe the bathroom. So yes. for the, for, for the bands, they had double headed showers. Jesus. Um, they had, uh, heated tile floors. Yep. It said in the bar. Um, here. yeah. TVs, uh, you know, like nice TVs and leather couches mm -hmm. and just everything was just like. These double headed the shower. <laughs> yeah, this is all I gotta say. Like double headed shower. Jesus. And oh, what is the name of this venue though? What the hell is it called? <laughs> uh maybe they've changed their name to PNE Forum. Is that it? Hmm. It's Vancouver. I don't know what the hell it was called. We played there with Strapping Young Lad. Oh my god. Um let me let me see if I pull that up. It'll show up. Freak it. Man. Yeah, it's Vancouver. And Norva has a great, in Virginia, has a great venue um, called, or, I mean, a, they have a hot tub in their venue, what? or in the ba uh, dressing room. And then there's <laughs> saunas, hot tub, yeah. you know, tons of great showers with, like, fire hose type <laughs> water pressure that you really need on Just tour. Just blast you <laughs> off the freaking floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's the kind of stuff. And then you, like, remember the really horrible ones, too. Mm -hmm. Like, so White Rabbit in San Antonio is okay. hands down one of the worst fucking backstage bathroom <laughs> shower experiences of your life. Nice. Absolutely horrid. Dude. Horrid, horrid, horrid. <laughs> wow, got... this is a great tangent here. 
<laughs> right, yeah. Let's go. Dude, I'm telling you, who would have thought we were going to be talking about bathrooms? Probably anyone that's watched me on Twitch. <laughs> They're like, it's going here. <laughs> it's going to happen. Like, for me, it's It's going gonna, it's gonna to go somewhere weird. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. That's what we're expecting. That's what we're going for. But, Excellent. dude, in, uh, in Nashville, there's a place called The Inn. That is uh, the end. Like, there's yeah, the exit. Yeah, we played there, I believe. Yeah, dude, I've seen some crazy bands there that you would like. Be like, why are they? It's like a small. There's the exit in, and then right across the street, there's a place called the end, and uh, that has the worst bathroom I think I've ever been in. And I think I was conceived in the bathroom there. Oh, um, all <laughs> right. I was conceived in a <laughs> pile of piss. <laughs> yeah, and a few months later. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. That was the worst I've ever been to. It, was, like, had stickers everywhere, like, all over the toilet and stuff like that, which is, I guess, privilege. But uh, it was just, like, there was, like, I'm pretty sure turds on the outside of the toilet. It was, dude, it was rough. It was rough. Uh, yeah, nothing worse. Nothing worse. Oh, yeah. And it was one of those you could tell people had been, like, peeing in the sink because the bathroom, like, the toilet was working. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> It was rough, I'll admit dude. I've done that before. You know, oh, sometimes yeah. you gotta go. You gotta piss in the sink. You just gotta it's okay. do it. Man. I don't see the problem with it. I really <laughs> just, don't. You just gotta rinse it out. You just gotta rinse it out. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's just turn the water on. Whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but man, so okay. I know we're kind of sporadic on this, but I just I've got a couple of things that I definitely would at least like wanted to wanted to ask you about. But so your second album, The Impossibility Reason, charted. And that was like your second album, and in a very like different climate of music at the time. I mean, everything was going on. How did it feel charting your second album? Did it even feel like? I mean, what were your thoughts whenever you found out that you charted? I honestly don't recall. I remember it. It, it was probably, if I had to, you know, guess, it was probably a, a great feeling. But then, it became like a matter of concern later in the career so mm -hmm. i think like any like good moments of feelings i've ever had have probably been erased by like oh my god we need to get this album to a certain level before the first week or it's going to be a horrible experience yeah. that's the kind of stuff that like took away from uh took away from that a little bit um mm -hmm. so i don't i don't necessarily remember but i i do remember that any time you know after that that we charted as long as it was like where we had hoped to be, we were really yeah. excited and grateful. And, and it's not that we hoped to be because we were entitled. Mm -hmm. It was literally like a matter of survival for our band, right? Damn. Because yeah. that kind of stuff mattered. So mm -hmm. if the fans went out and bought the album first week and we got into uh, the charts, then – our upcoming tour cycle and the marketing money and all the promotion would go full steam ahead. Whereas mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then you're like, Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so is it almost one of those kind of like, once you've done it, then now you're like, if I don't do this, then I've not accomplished what I've set out to do. Kind of there's thing. a, there's a bit of that too, especially if it goes down. Yeah. And it, but, it's, you know, if you like you debut at number 150 or something on one album and then the next one's like at 199 you're like what did i do wrong what did, yeah. yeah i don't believe that's ever happened to us thankfully mm -hmm. but it's also like not something to brag about because like in the subsequent releases it's like nobody's buying albums anymore so it looks like yeah. we're charting higher yeah but in all reality <laughs> we're not you know yeah not so like <laughs> have as many albums yeah yeah exactly so <laughs> technically on paper we've never We've never went downhill, but no, we went we yeah. went way downhill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, in saying that, like, you've seen the industry change a ton, I'd imagine, from, like, whenever y'all first started and you were selling albums and, like, doing, like, uh, I mean, The Impossibility Reason. Whenever you sold – how many albums did that one sell? Do you remember the number? I want to say Impossibility at this point in time worldwide is probably close to 200,000 albums. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's I might insane, be – That's awesome. I might be a little off by like something, but mm -hmm. I, I want to say the last time I asked, it was at 180,000, and that was a, a while ago. It was the Commodore Ballroom in Vancouver, by the way. I oh, had nice. to look it up, there but I finally go. found it. So, <laughs> yeah, best, good, best bathroom. Guys, yeah. We're, we're going to like clip that and then put it on their Yelp review. Mark approved. Yeah, do it. <laughs> best, best, ba best venue bathroom. <laughs> nice. You just got a five star Vancouver. 
Yeah, Ocelion, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I sing for a country band called Hunter Black. Hunter Black? We got a new al- yeah, we got a new album coming out <laughs> called uh, Snake Skin Hat. <laughs> it's about my life. <laughs> it's about my life getting drunk at a bar <laughs> and a dog and wife leaving me and my pickup truck getting stolen. That's the number one hit. You're going to you're going to chart a, you're going to chart man. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's right greasy gamer. A jacked up pickup. <laughs> Younger Jamie in the house. What's happening? How's it going? Um so do you remember the like was photography has photography always been a thing for you like even whenever you were in Chimera and you were touring and actively pursuing Chimera was photography still something that you would like dabble in or is it when did photography yeah, that's really become the thing for you sure um so uh i've been fascinated with film mm-hmm. and i'm very attracted to cinematography a lot of times some of the movies i enjoy they're telling you the story through pictures like say mm-hmm. for example 2001 not much dialogue in that film and i love it mm-hmm. so uh i've always been interested and fascinated with the world of imagery when the band started, I was kind of the guy that picked the photos. Mm-hmm. So we we would work with a photographer for promo shots. Mm-hmm. They would take a thousand. They would send me all the proofs, and I'm sitting there looking with a glass, these like magnifying glasses, <laughs> and like going like, through all of them, looking like a diamond jeweler. Ka- yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, Andal's eyes are closed again. Mm-hmm. He's ruined every shot. <laughs> <laughs> Open your fucking eyes, drummer. It's always the drummer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so just doing that. And then in 2004, I had the opportunity to go to Sony, the movie studio, because oh, nice. a buddy of, uh, ours worked, he was an animator. He, he first mm-hmm. worked for ILM and mm-hmm. took me to go like to Skywalker ranch and shit, which is, oh, was damn, that's insane. Awesome. And, yeah. And then he gets the job for Sony. His name's Neil Lim <laughs> Sang. He's an amazing photographer and all that. And, um, uh, so he, he took me to Sony where he was working and they had a, a store there and he's like, Hey man, I can get you discount. He's like, they've got these new cameras. And he was a photographer. He's like, they got these new cameras. They fit in your pocket, but they have real high resolution. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it's like, Oh four. So this is kind of like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> this is just yeah, tech. yeah. So, uh, you don't have to have film. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> well, let me so our disposable camera and, um, so I bought that and I was able to get it at a discount and I just took photos. Let's, you know, I'm on tour and take, po- Hey, we're at Stonehenge click. You yeah. Know? yeah. Never really thought much about it. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to 2012. I'm still interested in all that stuff. And we were making a documentary. There's an extra camera around and I just picked it up and started shooting. And everyone was like, dude, these pictures are awesome. You're, you're a natural. Hey, you're a natural. So you start getting that type shit going on. You're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Well- Maybe I should do it. So I bought the camera from the yeah. director that was working on our <laughs> awesome. uh, our project. Mm-hmm. And then I just went for it. And I just kind of fell in love with it. I had some friends that were good photographers that helped me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Brown and Alex Morgan. Uh, they're uh, two really gifted photographers that I met through music. They they photographed our band. Mm-hmm. And I thought they were some of the, the best uh, guys that had done it. So yeah. I'm like, well, I want to pick their brains. And what are they up to? And um so I learned from them like some basic stuff, and then mm-hmm. YouTube, of course, is a big help. Um, oh, yeah. When you whether I want to learn how to hack my uh, uh, dishwasher or learn how to be a, become a photographer, I can do yeah. either one. <laughs> for so, real, uh, for real. Yeah, and then I just it's a lot of trial and error. After mm-hmm. that, I just go out and do it. You know, spend all night, try different kinds of photography, see what you like, see what you don't like. Mm-hmm. And I and I have a very clear understanding now, uh, kind of eight years now into it of like what I enjoy doing and what I en- don't enjoy doing, and I'm I'm at a yeah. luckily at a place now where I can be selective. Yeah, I think that's awesome, man. And I mean, like with uh, photography, has there been like, I, well, first I'll go ahead and say this: like I know with Chimera, all the imagery that y'all have is very unique for y'all's band, and especially whenever y'all were first doing it before people were like you know trying to mimic y'all's style and stuff it was really original did y'all have um an inspiration for like the early years of photography with chimera 
My biggest influence uh, for any kind of imagery is um, stuff like Stanley Kubrick stuff. So, for example, mm -hmm. The Impossibility of Reason, mm -hmm. it's a stark white cover with just a symbol on it. Yeah. And that was uh, very much influenced by the Full Metal Jacket poster, which is a stark white yes. cover with just the green helmet on it, which mm -hmm. is, symbolizes what it's all about, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like the symmetry and um, the coloring style. I remember showing Todd Bell, uh, our director for like the dehumanizing process and who did a lot of our uh, photography on a lot of our albums. He would always ask, like, what, are, what movies are you into? Mm -hmm. And uh, show me some stuff. So like I remember giving him Kubrick stuff. I remember giving him Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the first one. <laughs> I'm absolutely in love with the cinematography of that film. The scene when Leatherface is sitting by the window, I just mm -hmm. remember pausing that. And I'm like, dude, look at the coloring on his face. Look how it's lit. Like, yeah. I just love the darkness of it. So mm -hmm. it's all about sitting there with your photographer and or director and kind of explaining what you like about certain things. And then they yeah. take it from there. And then it's their vision kind of, you know, with your little yeah. uh, influences mm -hmm. sprinkled in. Right. So it's they're not just doing what you ask. They just want to know what you like and they can kind of like get into that zone you're they're yeah. in your wheelhouse mm -hmm. but that's also a hundred percent them yeah so uh we we don't we, you know i can't take responsibility other than saying like hey man this is the kind of stuff i like and then you know other guys do the same thing so he's kind of absorbing mm -hmm. to try to get everybody's taste and then his own taste and then you know some directors are just totally opposite though too but todd was the guy that we worked with the most that we actually sat down with and yeah. did they worked on a couple of our album covers, our documentaries, our mm -hmm. photographs. So that's the best person, you know, to kind of give an example. And yeah, we would show them like Nine Inch Nails videos later in the day. Mm -hmm. Like when Nine Inch Nails came out with, uh, when the Canon came out with the 5D, mm -hmm. Nine Inch Nails, their director just like walked out on stage with them with the 5D. And it was like, <laughs> holy cow, you yeah. know, like. I've never seen anything like this. I'm mm -hmm. like, we can get a 5D. What? We can get a we can get the same camera? What? It looks so cinematic. <laughs> Our minds were blown. Yeah. And uh, so then we get Todd a 5D, and he jumps on the bus with us, and now we can do that same kind of shit and yeah. uh, make a documentary out of it. And like, it's totally different because when he was originally doing our documentaries, he's got this giant. <laughs> this is 2001. He's like, he's all right, guys, I'm here. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, man. Um, I just. Like movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and for me, I think one of my favorite uh, of all time movies, The Thing. Like I freaking love that movie, and just like the whole setting of it with like Alaska, and that, I think that has like the, one of my favorite, most iconic scenes in a movie of all time. Whenever he's just uh, he's like uh, sitting out there in the woods, and or, well, they're like both sitting out in the snow, and they're like, uh, "What do we do from here?" And then uh, he just says like. I guess we're just going to see, see what happens. And then the movie pretty much ends with them both in the snow. Freaking love that movie. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, just in case y'all haven't I'm seen this teasing. movie. <laughs> no, I know. Like, if you haven't seen this movie, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but yeah, <laughs> I don't know about you. Don't know, guy. Yeah. But, uh, man, so how did – so I know with Chimera being on hiatus, right? It's hiatus, would you consider it hiatus? Yeah, or? I think it's more of a hiatus. Like, it's kind of weird with us, right? We – we all live different lives now, and it, it, there used to be a point where the band meant everything to everybody. It was mm -hmm. our career. It was the only job we had. Uh, none of us had families. It's complete opposite now. Like, Chimera is a hobby or something that we would want to do for fun. Yeah. And that's so much better than the other way around for our mental health mm -hmm. and for – uh, moving forward in the future, especially financially, right? Because like, yeah, we don't have to have a record label in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's just not as necessary as it was in 2000. Yeah. But, you know, if anytime we've kind of gotten a little bit of gas in the tank and being like, all right, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we do this, this, and this? And then you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Somebody or something kind of prevents it from being able to happen. Mm -hmm. So. The biggest example right now would be COVID, right? Oh, so God, if no. we wanted to do anything in 2020, uh, we actually did, but mm -hmm. can't. So it's yeah. like, all right. And then that just 
when you get iced like that, Ugh. you know, it's hard to warm up again. So yeah. I think like what's nice though is like I, I do the Twitch stuff, which helped me get back into singing Kamira music and playing mm -hmm. it again. And then I know Rob does a lot on his channel to um, t teach fans either uh, some stories about the past or just new, you know, like yeah. tips on what it's like to be a musician. Mm -hmm. So we're still kind of keeping it alive out there in a, in a in our own unique way. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just circumstance right now is unfortunate. So we'll see where 20, 20, 21 takes us. But oh, as God, for now, yeah. the best way you're going to see us is on the Internet. Yeah, and it's just going to be me and Rob for the most part. There you go. It's different, man. I feel like I just – I miss live shows so much, man. That That's my main problem with this whole year right now is there are so many that were lined up that I was like, yes, this person's coming to Nashville yeah. finally, and then it's just like – I know. I got bubbed out with – I'm not much of a live show guy, but I'm a mm -hmm. big movie guy, and mm -hmm. all the movies I wanted to see are now delayed. So. I know, yeah. It screwed up everything, man. Do Absolutely. you remember what the, uh, the last live concert that you went to was? Oh, I know exactly what last live concert was. It was Machine Head, and they came oh. here into Cleveland in February, and I did not want to go because I had this gut <laughs> feeling I was going to get coronavirus. Guess what happened? Did you get coronavirus? I got coronavirus. At the concert, you think? Yeah, definitely, because they had it. <laughs> God. Whoops. Yeah, and like you said, it was in February? Yeah. See, that's like what is it? That's like that the gray area of time with the coronavirus. Like People are like, eh. Is it really going to be that right. big of a deal? And yeah. No, nah, I knew it was a big deal. I We knew about it in January, and mm -hmm. I was so paranoid that day. I had gloves on. I had the hand sanitizer. I'm like, I didn't want to go in go here. In I don't want to go to the show. Please cancel. Please have the snow <laughs> cancel the show. Like something happened. But it go, but my, the other half of me, the, the angel on my side is you love Machine Head. Yeah. You love Rob Flynn. You want to see the guys. Oh, my God, it's burned my eyes. 25th anniversary. You were oh at God. the 10th anniversary. Yeah. You know, like – Go to the 25th anniversary. Like, <laughs> why wouldn't I go? But, you know, rational Mark is like, dude, there's a fucking <laughs> virus out there. You know it. You know you're going to catch it because you catch everything. And what happened? Caught oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's rough, man. That's pretty rough. Last concert, you caught Corona. But that would definitely yeah, put so a I don't think... in it for this year. Yeah, shows can fuck off is all I care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't blame I kid, you. of course. But, yeah. I... I just don't want to touch anybody anymore. Like I'm done shaking hands. Like mm -hmm. I'm good, bro. You know, like we can we can fist bump. I'm cool yeah. with that. I elbow bumped like a uh, 80 year old man the other day, and I was like, he introduced the elbow. By the way, he was like, I was like, yeah, what are you doing? Bump, yeah, yeah. It was so weird. It was so weird. Like I don't know. It was a. Uh, it's weird times we're living in, man. It's very weird times. And I like with live shows. Yep. I don't see how it's going to end up coming back. Like I, unless there's like a mass vaccine that they're like, everybody get this shot. And then like, are they going to make sure that you've had your COVID shot before you walk in the door? Like what, you know what I mean? How are they going to put these like 1500 crowd clubs shows yeah. together again? Well, mm -hmm. rapid, rapid at home testing would be effective. Mm. And it just so happens I happen to own stock in a company that is oh, on thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm the just right, almost there for that FDA approval. Fingers crossed. Please happen so I can just go retire. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you want to drop that stock uh, stock but, logo? You just let us know that symbol, my friend. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll do it right now. Oh, they yes, have the first. There you go. Um, they have the first uh, patent. Oh, there you um, go. At home testing. Exploit Hydra said, "Just popping in to say, Mark, you have a really nice room." <laughs> I appreciate it. It's pretty awesome. Thank you so much. I uh I like the uh I like the colored lights and I think they're mm -hmm. so fun. Like just to have it uh yeah. change the vibes. I like vibes of colors and I'm not much on natural sunlight. So That's anything true. I can do I to keep it like there. the same time. You know, you just time never exists. I don't know what time <laughs> it is and you're like a casino, right? Yeah, yeah, you're in Vegas, <laughs> man. <laughs> Megan, I ask questions. All right, hold on one second. Here we go. Ask Mark a question. Oh, sorry. Dun, dun, dun. What would it take you to have you as a sponsored streamer for GreasyGamer.com? Which that guy can get you Just some let people. me know what Greasy Gamer – let me know what GreasyGamer.com is all about. I'm not a gamer at this time, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to be. I want to get some shit. Like I'm trying to get my hands on a PS5 when that comes yes. out. Um, 
So yeah, yeah, I got a couple buddies working on it for me because we all know that that pre-order stuff's been a little rough. Um, real though. So I definitely want to uh, be a gamer. Just whisper to me and uh, let me know. Um, yeah, let me know more about it, and I'd be happy to help you out. Man, Greasy is legitimately... Oh, uh, is telling me... I'm sorry, we played with Green Day, Incubus, Mandy Moore, and Macy Gray <laughs> at that show. <laughs> Jesus, dude. That would have been the most ridiculous... And is that the same that was all one stage? Or is this multiple? That's one, that's one show. Oh, my that's God. That's one show. It's not even a festival. That's the only, that's like two two other bands he says that he can't remember. That and is insane, it was like dude. It, was, it starts with us, Incubus, <laughs> Green Day, Mandy Moore, Macy Gray, and then uh, maybe somebody else. Dude, if it was Green you Day guys, smashed then... a guitar. What, do you remember what yeah, song you hilarious, played? Hilarious, right? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, what we songs? played Dead Inside, and then we played uh, Severed. So Severed they cut is so it, though, heavy, dude. So it only looks like. I know they cut it. <laughs> they cut the video so it only looks like we played Dead Inside. Oh, there and you go. I'm like super out of breath because I'm like, ah, so <laughs> I'm like destroying shit. And um, I don't show any of that. So I look winded from playing Dead Inside. And I'm like, people were all, are on all, all of the comments are like, man, God can't sing his own song. I'm like, dude, there was another five minutes. Yeah. Good God. Hey, Greasy Gamer has just gifted you a sub to this channel, my friend. There you go. Emotes. <laughs> but I don't Thank know. Thank you so much. That is a. Uh, and, um, also, uh, Meg has asked a question. That girl, Meg, asked, yeah. uh, where was your favorite place you've traveled? Japan. I thought that was a, just, I don't know, man. There's something about Japan. Japan? Um, yeah, Japan. So it's just beautiful there. And the, it's the only place I've ever been to in a world, in the world where I feel like a fish out of water. Mm-hmm. And you can't read anything, and not everybody can understand you. And then a lot of times they do, they'll pretend they understand you. So it's even more confusing. <laughs> uh, the first time uh, we were there, I remember going to a bar, and mm -hmm. it's like us and the In Flames guys, and we're all just hanging nice. out, drinking. Mm -hmm. And they're pros at Japan. Yeah. You know, this is probably the 10th time they've been there, and this is our <laughs> first time. And. Mm -hmm. So at the time I wanted to, you were all having drinks. So I'm like, I tell the server, I'm like, I'll have a uh, vodka and coke. Mm -hmm. And the server's like, uh, hi, <laughs> and walks away. You know, it brings everybody their drinks. They don't bring me anything. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, excuse me, could I please have a, you know, a vodka and coke? Hi, <laughs> walks away. Nothing comes. You know, flames guys start fucking laughing. They're like, <laughs> they don't understand you, man. That he doesn't understand you. <laughs> He's like, you gotta go. You gotta go up there, kind of like go through this whole ordeal. Yeah. I had to go and tell them what I wanted, oh like God. a different server what I wanted. Yeah. And um, so yeah, that uh, that was hilarious. Like the language barrier. Just man. the like height, height. You know, like <laughs> pretending they know what you're saying and they have no fucking idea. <laughs> I have I looked, no clue. So, and this was another weird thing about Japan, too, was mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Japanese prints. I own mm -hmm. a lot of T-shirts with Japanese, like, yeah. movie prints instead of the American version. It's Japanese mm -hmm. um, posters and all that. So, I spent a day in Japan. I'm like, I'm going to get all these Japanese movie posters. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get Star Wars. I'm going <laughs> to get, like, everything I could think of. Yeah. So, first off, my challenge is finding – a poster store like yeah no one understood what the hell i was asking for <laughs> and you can't read it so like i get sent to like... a shoe store i yeah. get sent to a furniture <laughs> store i you know like no one is sending me to the right place yeah and i finally get to like kind of like what you would consider like an fye or a mm. music store that has memorabilia and yeah. pop culture so i'm like okay finally here's some dvds they got cds yeah. oh okay ah poster rack <laughs> Yes, I've nice. made it. The All great. American posters. They oh, want the American God. Ones. We've sunk our claws in, man. We've sunk our claws in. <laughs> <laughs> they want the English prints. For real, man. No, that's so rough, dude. That's horrible. But of course, like, they had this sick, like, Darth Vader. I think it was, like, probably it would have been episode, what was 04? Uh, episode mm -hmm. 3? 
maybe I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, um, so I remember just seeing a big like Japanese dart, uh, dart Vader. I was trying to haggle the guy to sell me that he wouldn't. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, but anyway, beautiful country, long story short, beautiful country, amazing people, great mm-hmm. audience. I loved the aesthetic of everything. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would, I don't know if I would live there, but I would love to go back. Yeah. You'll uh, we went the... to, oh, go on. sorry. It was us in flames and God forbid. Dude, that is awesome. That's awesome. And it, yeah, we did uh, uh, King Edward asks. We did uh, Tokyo. We did mm. Nagoya, and we did Osaka. Nice. And Osaka was, I think, the first place we played. No, Nagoya was. Nagoya mm. was. How are the crowds over there? Like you said that they were silent. So like after, d- during the concert, do they move? Like during the actual show, are they are they moving? Are they. Yeah, but not like. It's not like America where you have like, you know, like all of a sudden you have like the dude in the pit that's like, all right, and he starts like kicking mm-hmm. everybody in the head. Um, you know, you don't see like the violent yes. type of pits. It's more like kind of like hopping like Megadeth Bunny in the chat room, yeah. you know, <laughs> more or less having a good time. And then when you're speaking, they don't speak. Mm-hmm. So it's, just it's like crickets. Yeah, that's what's that's what's uh, difficult. Yeah. And there's these rumors. Uh, there's rumors. I don't know if there's mm-hmm. they're true. But uh, of Phil and Selmo being in uh, from Pantera being in Japan and oh knowing that whatever he said, he would get the crowd to react. Yeah. And <laughs> as long as you have a specific type of inflection in your voice, like, how's everybody doing tonight? You know, like <laughs> yeah, they understand yeah. that, like, yeah. you're going up and then they're like, ah, yes, this is good. Yeah. And then, so apparently, I don't know if this is true. It's musician folklore that gets that that, that yeah. gets um filtered into your mind, right? <laughs> and apparently he's like, you know what, Japan? You know, like ah, I got the biggest dick in this fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like what? Yes! <laughs> you 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 don't deny it because you're like, well, Phil says some interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> Dude, we feel so like... Apparently he spent a whole yeah, he spent a lot of time talking about his the size of his genitalia in comparison <laughs> to the rest of the Japanese audience and they they ate it up. Nice. There you go. <laughs> I can't wait till he comes back. Dude mm-hmm. He's like out of all the people that I've seen with like YouTube clips of him doing crazy stuff on stage, he's got like He's got a number of them. He definitely does. Hey, he's up there, right? Yeah. Yeah. For real. Good old Phil. Yeah. You know, Japan, too. Um, ex- exactly, King Edward. They're very respectful. Mm-hmm. And they're also, like, very advanced. They were texting before we knew any of that shit was. That's awesome. And uh, we got to the hotel, and there's, like, a bunch of fans there. Mm-hmm. Like, How the hell do we, they know where we are? And then <laughs> they don't. they don't bother you. If you look at them and kind of walk towards them, then they mm. come up to you and they, they ask for your autograph. They're very respectful. Yeah. Then they kind of just stay there and then like, all right, hey, we're going to go to this bar. Get to the bar and they're there before you. And you're like, <laughs> what the? How are they doing this? And what they're doing is they're texting and we didn't know what the hell they were yeah. doing. Like they would like, they'd hear us kind of like, you know, someone's like, oh, they're going to rock rock. Boom, bam, into the cars, boom, they're there before we are. We're like, holy nice. shit. They've got freaking tunnels. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they were everywhere. But that was it was awesome though. Like how cool is it? You feel like the Beatles or something, right? But yeah. they were very respectful. They're not screaming at you and in, in your face. So Yeah. Very cool. That's really neat, man. I, I so well in saying that, I know in America we're just like kinda like, whatever, dude. I see you, I'm gonna come talk to you. What's like the weirdest like fan experience that you've had like that in America? Hmm. Mm. Okay, so not really a fan, but we oh assumed he was a fan. <laughs> so Jason Sukoff, the producer, mm-hmm. um, he recorded our album Resurrection. He's recorded so many great metal bands. You name them, he's probably had his hand in it somehow. Um, he is paralyzed and has uh, he's in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And we were playing in Florida one of our first times. We didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. And he's got a very eccentric personality. He is yeah. just amps to 11. <laughs> we're, we're quiet, reserved dudes. Mm-hmm. He like, I mean, I'm lit, like literally 
first. You know, like just coming to our room and just going crazy, pretending he's Glenn Benton from Deicide, and we're all just like, "Who (laughs) is this guy? Like this guy is insane." That's how you make a mark. And uh, yeah, we were like, "Dude, who the fuck is that?" Like, you don't want to say anything because you're like, "Oh man, he's in a wheelchair." (laughs) Yeah, yeah. start feeling bad. Yeah, but I'm like, "No, this guy's fucking Looney Tunes. He might have a gun in there. You know, like he's at any minute he's gonna go crazy." (laughs) Then you understand Dude. Jason Sukoff's personality, and you yes. realize he's one of the funniest dudes on the planet, and he's one of the most talented dudes on the oh, planet. God, but yes. like, he literally just burst into our room, and he's like, <laughs> 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 "We all playing with, uh, with the a band good... that he recorded, or who are y'all playing with at that show? Do you remember?" I, I don't really know. I just think he came to the show. <laughs> I really don't know the. Uh... Yeah. I just remember being like extremely annoyed with him the first time and being like, "Man, who is this fucking yes, clown?" Yeah. How did it go? And from... uh, but then like, mm. how did it go? Did we start working with him yeah, then? Yeah, yeah. How did y'all go from like dude busting the room <laughs> so, to like let's? Uh, we did, we found guy. out that night that he was a producer and mm-hmm. stuff like that. We're like, "Oh, okay, all right, you know, he's yeah. cool." Um, he wasn't some crazed <laughs> fan, and that's kind of what our impression was at the beginning. Yeah, and um. So then we're like, oh, all right. And then, long story short, they were doing the Roadrunner United album, which turned mm-hmm. 15 yesterday. Dude, and I listened to that album yesterday. Yeah, randomly. That's great, right? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So many cool, so many cool uh, songs on that album. Yes. So I was asked to be on the song with Dino and uh, uh, Paul Gray mm-hmm. and my Orga and Andreas Kisser. I was asked to do vocals for a song. And. Mm-hmm. I wound up getting sick and I couldn't record it home. Mm-hmm. So I needed to record it on tour to have it done in time. Mm-hmm. And we were, our first show was in Florida. And so Monty from Roadrunner was like, oh, Trivium's producer is right there in Orlando. Just go with him, Jason Sukoff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. No, not that guy. <laughs> guy in the wheelchair? Dear God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Like, that guy's insane. Yeah. And, um, uh, so I'm like, but I have to do it. I want to be on it. There's no other choice, you yeah. know. So I'm like, let's do it. As soon as he got to like, we we met up for food. As soon as I got there, and like, mm-hmm. he was totally normal and like, all right, man, this guy's cool. Yeah. And then once once we got in the studio, he was making me laugh so hard, <laughs> and um, he started playing me his other like his band, Crotch Duster. And, uh, Duster? We just had a great time, and like, man, That's I fell awesome. in love with the dude's talent, his personality. Mm-hmm. It's just a great dude, and yeah. uh, as soon as I heard Crotch Duster, I'm like, I want to work with somebody like this. That's so um, diverse and mm-hmm. just talentedly, just interesting. Like talentedly, that's a, is that a word? <laughs> uh, anyways, he was, it is now, man. Uh, just very interesting. And we had been working with Ben Shigel forever, mm-hmm. and it's not that he's he's very diverse as well, like mm-hmm. extremely. But we kind of needed to get out of that. Uh, box for a little bit and yeah. expo- experiment with somebody new so mm-hmm. i felt he was the perfect match and it just goes to show you that like uh you know don't always i don't believe in that judge book person the first time you meet them because you know sometimes you meet somebody they're not in the best mood sometimes the next time they're they're fine yeah so. um i so did right, you, king edward see ya did you uh did you write um the lyrics for that song that you did on uh roadrunner united uh enemy did you write the lyrics yes. to that one yes that freaking track is like blistering dude like i don't know the energy that you brought into that like your vocals are on point and was that his first time that he recorded you right yes Mm -hmm. yeah i had everything prepared but again he's a great producer so he can like help me fine tune some of those ideas Mm -hmm. and uh you know enhance them or maybe have me um you know do like a specific Mm -hmm. you try it with a higher voice or double this or yeah so he brought you know, it's not 100% my my doing, but and he brought a lot to the table as well. But I came in there prepared. I knew what I wanted to do mm-hmm. and had my lyrics ready. And you know, at the first, I'm thinking, I got to get the fuck in and get out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to hang out with this guy. Can't be with the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe I am prepared. <laughs> like, then I was I mean, like, man, I don't want to leave. You know. So I was really yeah. glad that we got to become friends. And I spent shit. We spent two months with him, probably That's or awesome. whatever, making resurrections. So. Yeah. 
And you can definitely hear like the change. And like you said, I think like impossibility of reason was really well produced, but you can hear the the difference. Like there was definitely different stuff going on behind the scenes from resurrection and impossibility for sure. At 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, and also our guy, Epic Merc, who actually made the flyer for today's show, uh, said, what's your oh, least cool. favorite song to play live? Do you have a song? Um, yeah, of course. Um, so there's a song we have called Options that we just refuse mm. to play live because we don't <laughs> like the song. <laughs> and then um, I guess like the one that feels weird for a while was Dead Inside because that mm-hmm. was our farm club song. And that was the yeah. one that like it's kind of like that in between new metal. Like we can't really play this one for Slayer. Mm-hmm. For, like <laughs> it became embarrassing. But now if we play it, it's it's that that kind of shit's worn off. Right. You're over yeah. yourself. You're not like not. 28 years old anymore not you know like hiding from my 24 year old self Mm -hmm. that's kind of like what i guess would annoy me before now it's like fair game i enjoy playing all the songs and um whatever whatever uh on the twitch stream like i've been playing i do like little mini sets and i've been screaming some stuff that i haven't sang in yeah the ep was probably recorded Mm -hmm. and it's almost like is it one of those things now where you almost maybe even like playing that song more because it's something you haven't done in a long time you can kind of look back and maybe appreciate it in different ways now 100 percent. yeah it's not my is it my discord it might be my discord but i'm actually if they are it's somebody i'm not paying attention to it hilariously (laughs) though um so it's more or less um (laughs) yeah yeah, there's a new energy to it (laughs) Yeah, there's a, there's a new energy to it. So yeah. I'm not really thinking about it. I'm not putting too much thought into it. Someone's like, oh, play Lend a Hand. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I haven't done that in 18 years. Let's try it. Yeah, yeah. And just go for it. There's no, you know, whereas mm-hmm. before I'm like, well, I don't know. Like maybe only two people in an audience of 100 will know that. And I don't know if that's the best idea to play that song and spend mm-hmm. that five minutes. There's no, <laughs> I don't think like, all right, let's fucking play yeah. it. I'll try it. Let's yeah. go for it, man. So. Uh- Bianca Savage yeah. said, did you hear that they recently cloned an endangered horse? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> First switch, now this. What? Did. Endangered horse? I did not know that. I, that, that is wild. I know, that right? Is weird, I'm, wild I'm stuff. I did not know that. <laughs> um, but going into it. Oh, uh, I like cloning. I'm, I'm sure they've cloned humans by now. I, yeah, sure you it. know. They had to have. Do you watch, uh, do you watch other podcasts like much? Not as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. I was really heavy into the podcast world. I want to say like 2011 to 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, kind of got burned out on them. So now I'm very selective. But I do. So I, I, what are you going to throw at me? Well, yeah, I was going to say like uh, with like this cloning thing, freaking Joe Rogan's podcast. I don't know if you've seen, but he's had uh, Elon Musk oh, on there a course. few times. Yeah. Talking about uh, – the mm-hmm. Neuralink, dude. I am. It sure. might just be a fan theory, but I'm pretty sure he's already got it installed. That guy knows like everything. You talk to him about like fungus. <laughs> he's like, did you know the freaking soil rate of like these fungus talk to each other from Japan to here? It's like he's like. I'm pretty sure he's got it, man. I'm pretty sure he's got it. Neuralink. Yeah. Stuff seems wild, and I've been a I've been a fan of Rogan since he started his podcast, mm-hmm. and. uh that's the one I'll probably stick with for a long time. Whenever yeah. he has a guest that I'm, um, you know, it's uh, I'm definitely jumping on it. Right? There's so yeah. many, and they're they're so long, but they're they're great for when you, uh, great for when you're on a road trip or something, mm-hmm. or you got like a couple of hours to drive. Um, but man, there's so much, um, so much out there. But I really appreciate his because of all the the variety of the guests. And the topics yeah. he has are always of interest of, mm-hmm. of me. Like, I'm way into uh, conspiracy theories. I'm way oh, into too, all the esoteric stuff. And I'm way into the drug stuff. And, mm-hmm. like, because I want to sit around and take it. But I'm just fascinated with the medicinal stuff. And that, where he goes with that is real yeah. interesting. The nutrition stuff he has on there. Mm-hmm. It's all great. It's all great. I 100% agree, man. I think like uh, – All the DMT. It's all connected, bro. <laughs> Have you ever done this Twitch stream on DMT, bro? <laughs> Not yet, but next one, next week. We're getting our hands on it. Let's do this. Uh, but yeah, man, I swear like that – just his style of podcasting too. I feel like I, I've actually been watching a lot more to try to like 
understand how he's doing it. I think now he's just doing his like second nature, but he, he's got a he's got an art, man. He's he's very well trained doing what he does. Without um, question. Uh, yeah, I mean he knows how to dig in and he knows how to be knows how to ask questions that are engaging. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think like I don't know. I, he's been doing it so long. I think he's on thousand something, almost two thousand episodes or something, and like he's he's very practiced for sure oh man I, yeah i remember the, what was the 999 wasn't that or was it 911 911 the alex jones Dude. One, alex jones one was epic <laughs> the, it was the funniest got, one of all time <laughs> Choke me they're out. eating the babies <laughs> <laughs> they're turning the frogs queer <laughs> like, and he's trying to get that dude to choke him out eddie bravo to choke him out <laughs> yeah 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 great shit i mean yes. that's just you you can't pay for that kind of entertainment, right? Like really, no one dude. can come up with that as a joke. Like yeah. that, that's quality <laughs> reality TV. Yes. There, if you ask me, it's ridiculous, man. Um, well, going on back to this really quick, the Down Again documentary that you've put out. Um, can you? How did you get started on that idea to come out with that documentary? And, um, you talking about like bipolar depression and stuff. Have you had like? I, what's been the reaction of that? Um, it came about through the filmmaker, Nick Cavalier. He, mm -hmm. from Cleveland, he was actually a Chimera fan, and we met on a mental health panel that was hosted by Derek Hess, who is a world-famous artist that just so, also happens to be from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And we were on a panel with a psychiatrist or psychologist. I don't know. I know there's a difference yeah. between them. Whichever <laughs> one prescribes. I think that's a psychiatrist. Yeah, I think so. So um sat with him, Dr. Runnels, and it was basically a panel with an audience that we kind of shared our stories of how we use um we discover we have mental health mm -hmm. situations like bipolar. Nick and I both had bipolar, but we were both use art to kind of deal with a lot of the complications that arise from those things. Mm -hmm. So the panel was all about that, and people could ask questions and interact with us. And as soon as that was over, Nick was like, man, I'd love to make this into a documentary. He had already made a documentary about Derek Hess, mm -hmm. who struggles with alcohol. So it was kind of like a similar hero's journey yeah. where you know, you're dealt with uh, adversity and you have to come out the other side. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same premise but dealing with bipolar and music versus alcoholism and mm -hmm. uh, art. Uh, and also my documentary turns into the photography section because I had yeah. to leave music for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, leaving music definitely left me very stressed out, and I had to have a different medium because I'm at heart I just like to create. I like to spend my time yeah. um, just doing stuff that's not like – put me in an office situation, I'm, I'm a dead man. Yes. Like I can't do it. Yeah. Unless it's on my terms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, if I'm the one that's like wants to be in the office, you're golden. Yeah. If you force me to go in an office, it's, it's mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I feel like with touring and playing music, especially, and I think that like having bipolar disorder, it could definitely take a toll on you even more than just like the normal person that just is dealing with things like that. Um, I mean, seeing like, like we were talking about earlier with charting, like just the way that you might look at that as opposed to how somebody else would, you know, and, and yeah. I suffer with the same thing. I haven't been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but I'll like, I'm very hard on myself. And so if I like a, set a goal for myself, sometimes too high to reach. And then as soon as like, if I get there, then I'm not even happy about that. I'm like, let's set that next thing. And it's just a constant forward progression. But um yeah i don't know i just feel like a lot of people if y'all haven't seen it in the chat down again the documentary it's just um is it down again movie.com or uh, down again film I, I can throw it in here yeah i can i'll throw it in the chat that is i think it's just awesome man and knowing that like i i feel like there's a lot of people that can connect with you on that and like that probably had no idea that that's something that you were struggling with but or that you are you know, and just working your way through it. I think that's awesome, man. Our goal was to start a conversation mm -hmm. and try to also help, you know, show that it's, you know, remove the stigma of it, you know, just do our part that we can to help to remove the yeah. stigma. What was satisfying was we we got to perform at 
uh, our film performed at uh, various film festivals, mm -hmm. and I got to attend the one in Cleveland, which is That's a big awesome. deal. It, yeah, yeah. Our Cleveland Film Festival is, mm -hmm. is certainly no, uh, no, no joke. And I mean, it's no con, uh, but it's it's up there. And um, it was a packed theater, and there it wasn't a packed theater of uh, Chimera fans. It's yeah, anybody but anybody yeah. but. <laughs> yeah. So we were we were uh, approached at the end and and you know some folks came up to me and a woman came up to me said I really love this film. Mm -hmm. I finally feel like I understand my son. Like when you that hear a comment awesome. like that from somebody that yeah, uh, it's that's the whole, like yeah. that actually exceeded our goal. Yeah. Right? We wanted just the people to be able to talk about this sort of thing like mm -hmm. we're talking now just Explain, yeah. hey, there's a documentary. You can kind of check it out. Mm -hmm. oh, wherever you go with it from there, that's cool. I just want you to like think about it and and yeah. other alternatives and stuff like that. Because there are medicines out there, but it, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't be on specific mm -hmm. meds. I, I am, but I'm also on a, on a very low dose of them, so I can always express to my doctors that I would prefer to be more creative and you can get on enough yeah. meds that your creativity is zapped right yes. like you just don't want to be creative anymore mm -hmm. so I, i've always been very careful to express express that um creativity was important there's a there's a poet that was manic depressant and uh he for the longest time i mean he's doing really amazing work and then he got uh, admitted into an institution and they got him on i can't remember what they put him on but uh the last thing that he wrote was pretty much um it's crazy to think that all of my best work was just because the lack of salt in my brain, pretty much. But uh, the lack of salt, I think, is how he described it. But mm. it's just – I don't know, man. It, it, do you feel like sometimes like creative comes from that place though? Like not necessarily Absolutely. always in your manic phases, but in more like whenever you're depressed, whenever you're like more internal. And that's whenever some of your best work comes from. 100%. I mean, it's it's kind of. Do you feel like that with uh with your photography at all? Like, do you kind of do you get in that same place, or is it more like open with photography? Not at all. Not at all. It's a different. It's a different satisfaction. This is more like the same type of satisfaction you might have uh, making a merch design, mm -hmm. or making the album artwork, or yeah. making. It was way more fun, um, mm -hmm. way less stressful. I think you have to put yourself into a mindset when it comes to lyric writing or going to dark places and like mm -hmm. eh, the best place to be. So I definitely don't go there with photography. Yeah, I'm way more in a happy, happy uh, mindset and place of where I want to be with that and just having fun with it. But it gets stressful, right? Like, yeah, do a, a an important shoot. Like we have a wedding tomorrow, and I'm like, I can't be like, hey, can you do that first kiss over? I missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of stress that's involved with photography. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, man. I've got a friend actually as well that uh, he's a songwriter, and uh, me and him kind of go through like these in the winter. We'll normally write our most like our favorite songs that we write. You know, like lyrically, it's just more impactful in like just different times. And uh, I don't know. I think it's always because of that, just kind of like depression or just like just getting your thoughts and feelings out in in that way and just. I don't know. I, I like the fact that photography is a lot. It seems like a lot more healthy outlet. You know, you almost don't Wait. have to be in that place to come up with some of your better stuff. Correct. Is there an album that you wrote um, that you would say like you were at kind of like the most like a the hardest album for you to work on or that write because of depression? Yeah, the age of hell. That's just because half the band had left by this point, and it was just mm -hmm. a very dark time and just horrible. Like you know, you could just. Hey, we have to make an album while we're on a sync. I felt like the dudes in Titanic. Yeah, oh, God. Be, like playing Play the music. It. <laughs> it's been an honor playing. With you, sir. Sinking, yeah, it's been an honor playing here. <laughs> yeah. man. We're fucking jamming during a sinking ship. Yeah. Um, what like what got you to that point though? Like what what got it to where you feel like like you're? I mean, I'm sure with like impossibility, reason, resurrection, all these albums, like you're just in this forward progression and stuff. Did what? What do you feel like got you to that point? Where you were like mentally just like I'm done with this. Being older, I think that you know mortality is much yeah. more of a thing once you hit certain ages. Where mm -hmm. you're like, okay, if I'm 25, I don't care if I don't make any money. Mm -hmm. But I'm 35, I care if I don't make any money. Yeah, it winds up being that. It's, it oh, winds yeah. up being that black and white. 
and mm-hmm. that stress that adds of not being enough money. So, you know, we're dealing with the economy when it's at its worst um, under the uh, time where the gas are at, is at an all-time oh, high. Yeah. And you have to be it's touring. Like, it's like $6 for diesel. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus. oh, my goodness. So yeah. it's just a lot of factors hurt the wallet and the and the actual business of the band, and you mm-hmm. just can't keep up anymore. And it's mortality. Like, okay, do I want to be doing this, being stressed, broke? I've already accomplished mm-hmm. everything I'd ever set out to do. Yeah. So why am I doing it? Yeah. Why am I doing it? Yeah. It's I, I don't know, man. And then whenever you look at it like that, it's like the the money aspect definitely would outweigh the like the benefit, the creativity, and stuff like that. And then. I know the way that I look at stuff as well too. I feel like as soon as you start like, um, like not making as much money in it, you're just like, that, I w- I would get to that point mentally where I would just be like, no. when you have to downgrade on tours, like mm-hmm. it, 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 you'll understand you're doing it for a logical reason, mm-hmm. you know, but then it doesn't feel that way. Yeah, and I mean, I I don't know how much like, I I feel like the the times that we're living in the change from like we were talking about like whenever you're selling albums to now everything's being downloaded and they're trying to like the music industry is trying to figure out what to do there like how much did like how much to pay the bands for you know uh downloads as opposed to album sales and then ticket sales and stuff like that i imagine that change by itself probably did a lot you know to downgrade everything rearranged while we were in the middle of it so yeah our our album comes out and our record label is like, hey, we're going to sell to another label. Oh, God. So then your album gets lost in the shuffle because you were mm-hmm. an independent label that just got bought out by a major. The major doesn't care about you. Mm-hmm. And then um, you have downloading becoming and streaming starting to become the norm and CD sales start going by the wayside. Mm-hmm. Your band is supposed to sell CDs. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, uh, <laughs> nobody cares about CDs, dude. Yeah, you're a glorified CD and shirt salesman, and when half of your product is no longer there, then what? Yeah. Um. So yeah, that makes things difficult. Um. We also got hit by the MySpace generation. I know that'll sound weird, but mm-hmm. you start getting less tour. We started getting less tours because, and X, Y, and Z. Uh, have more MySpace followers, and you're like, what? Yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't, we didn't get that, we didn't get that big tour because who has what on and who? That's like before <laughs> they like, really how many realized, records they sell. Yeah, that's 10, before 000. they realized like, like people ten thousand. <laughs> only sold ten thousand albums. We sold a hundred and fifty, and we just lost a tour because this band has a lot of MySpace followers. I'm telling you, what man. the fuck is MySpace? Yeah, and that's probably before so, yeah. We were just like a little like... too old, right? So. <sighs> man. Well, just the I, and I'd imagine the way that things are now, like the, can you imagine what record label executives are doing right now, like with this COVID stuff? Like, I don't even I don't know. even want to think about it. This, <laughs> this is a horrible time for all my musician friends, right? None of them can tour, none of them can make money. Mm-hmm. A lot of them have to get different jobs. So yeah. it's, it's just a horrible time. It's a horrible time for the fans, merchandisers, roadies, venue workers, venues. Venues are closing down. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just horrible. And the thing that I've been seeing is, is like they're the first to go out of business and the last to come back into it. And like, there's not really any type of like, how did the, how did, is there any kind of assistance that they can take other than like, you know, like the small business loans that are given out and stuff like that for that. But it's It'll run it's out messed. though, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, uh, but I will say this: <clears throat> since we've talked about your documentary, <laughs> the chat is like blowing up with talking about that and supporting each other. I think that's freaking awesome. Like, yeah, I'm checking it out. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I love the conversation, man. So your the documentary has definitely done its job, and also something else too. I don't want to throw people off by uh, saying go check out your documentary, go pay for it, go do this. It's if you go to that it's website, free. it's free. Yeah, so free. Mm-hmm. go watch it, man. For real, it is definitely worth it. 20, 30 minutes. So yeah, it's only 30 minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I watched it all the other night. And um, I, and speaking of documentaries, I watched your all's first one uh, whenever Impossibility Reason came out. Like, I grew up watching, like, that DVD. I, like, freaking, I don't know, man. I, I love your work, dude. I'm just going to say that. Dude, freaking... oh, my God. It's the 12th. Tw- <laughs> Today's the 16th. It's the anniversary. Today is? I think yes. so. Get out there, go freaking watch it. Um, 
And then also, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you're actually going to be streaming at uh, 420 your time. But I'm going to shout you out. And then on here, in case everybody is not already following you. Please, guys, go check him out. He is uh, streaming on Twitch now. And you do a lot of live shows. Or, like, you, you sing a lot of your songs on Twitch as well. And some Wu-Tang Clan. You're muted, I think. I, I can't hear you on here. Can, I'm sorry. No, you're cool. You there? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're good. I'm back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I switched to look up when um, the dehumanizing process was released, it's actually in mm. 10 days. Okay. So that gives me time. I can do a watch party. Yes. Um, I haven't seen it in years, and it's so that'll be the 16th anniversary mm -hmm. of its release. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, what well, we do on the stream? Uh, morning, mornings we listen to the album and mm -hmm. kind of go with A through Z. So we're on the list this week. We just wrapped up Nine Inch Nails week. So oh, next nice. week we get to O. We're gonna do Ozzy week yeah. and so on and so on. Kind of make some and yeah, just have a little fun at night. I do some um, live performances if I'm feeling up to it, where I'll sing or maybe jam some guitar, mm -hmm. and we talk about. Movies and sometimes I make up songs about people that are in the <laughs> chat room nice. and uh, the little contests. You know, first contest was I had to wear Jenkos during a stream. Then I had to wear Jenkos to the mall. Now I'm going full colonial. So Dude. yeah, it's a great time in there. I love in the community. It's my third week now. Mm -hmm. I start week four on Monday, nice. and I just. Great time with it. I feel it's, uh, I'm in my natural environment, and I really enjoy hanging out with the people that are in there. And yeah. uh, it, it gets fun and uh, funny. And I like the raid. I like the community. Yeah. I like all that shit. Yeah. Do y'all like? Do you feel like there's a similarity? And then also, like, what would you say are some of the differences in like live streaming on Twitch and like playing a live show? I don't. <laughs> I can go. I can go lay in bed afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, exactly. That's a huge difference, but uh, that's hilarious. So, I yeah, it's just a uh, thing. Is you get hyped up. I do at least anyway. If I'm yeah, if I'm singing, and I'm the chat is like going crazy. Yeah. And, um. This it it's a feeling to playing a show like i sweat mm -hmm. the same you know i stink the same <laughs> like, I'm like, Man, I smell like i just played a show yeah. Fuck. so getting that feeling and uh that energy so it, it feels good to just jam up there and and hang out if this is all that you can do with it it sounds good in my headphones i made sure i got a good mic and i tried to like make it sound tight so yeah. it feels good you know yeah i like it man yeah like <clears throat> so i'm done like local shows and kind of like local tours and stuff like that and that's kind of how i feel too like i just it i don't know it, it's better in a sense for me because like you get to interact a little bit even more personally with the people you know Whoop. so i like that too and i will say man like totally when... way more interactive but yeah that's yeah that's what's cool because like i can literally shout someone out in the middle of the song yeah where i might not even see them mm -hmm. if, you know we're playing like i don't even know where they're standing yeah yeah, it's freaking awesome, man. And uh, uh oh, my kid, I'm blonde. Wait, hold on. Okay, there you go. Uh, kitten said she used to listen to Chimera, and she said she's a blonde. She just realized she was like, I just realized who you are. But uh, but yeah, um, Bianca Savage says John has legit been fighting vomiting this whole stream. <laughs> oh God, big time fingering. What? I don't even know. But yeah, like I just like whenever I would play concerts, I'd have panic attacks before like every single show i'd like throw up before a concert you know and like just really in my head throw anxious up, and yeah stuff. but did you did you ever have that like you ever thrown up before concerts getting so stoked like just overly panic attacks that's what i was just saying like yeah all the time yeah did it ever wear off did you ever get to where you're like ah oh, fuck it i'm just i'm just going out there i would puke and then just go right out <laughs> yeah that's I, I don't know that's like, like i'll tell people that i'm like as soon as i throw up i'm just that's like all over me and then i just walk right out on stage you know <laughs> then what's the worst like, that can happen after that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly nice 
Well, man, um, there you go. Well, stream so, twice now. What is it? <laughs> I've puked on my stream twice now. <laughs> I've done it once on mine. Done it once on mine the other night. We ate one of those uh, one chip challenges. It was horrible, dude. It was so freaking bad. I did it on an empty stomach. Challenge. Yeah, it's like uh, it's this little guy right here. It's a uh, it's like a really spicy chip, and uh, I threw up on my stream. It was freaking it was it was freaking horrible, dude. I will say that the chip didn't taste good, and then it was really hot. And as soon as it hit my stomach, I was like, Rawr! just projectile exorcism puke everywhere. It's like me. I won't even go near it, dude. Yeah. And they're now posting clips of it. There you go. Thank you very much. I'm going to be puking again just thinking about it. I got it here. It. Thank you. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> so you've really thrown up on your stream, though? Have you actually thrown up on stream? The room twice this week. Oh, dang, I dude. get times in the morning. Yeah. Is it anxiety or is it just like something different? Called. I have something called cyclical vomiting syndrome I've had since I was a child. Oh, God. There's own thing it can be like i can go outside and the weather will be completely different mm -hmm. and then i'll spend a week like with the worst stomach shit ever in the morning only oh damn yeah it's not good man i don't know it, it could be the environment it could be allergies yeah. it could be so they have no clue that's what it is dang man. uh it's it's a you know i'm not the only one that has it in the world so it's just it's just one of those things that people have that they have no idea yeah. what causes it there are some theories on how to fix it, mm -hmm. uh, but not many of them are effective. Yeah. Well, there it is, man. I don't know. I like, I feel that, like, like, yeah, some mornings. Sorry. Oh, no, no. I just like with throwing up now, I'm like, me and him are best friends. Me and puke. I just do it. I've done it enough that, it, like, a lot of people are like, I can't stand to puke. I'm like, did it. Yeah, <laughs> just did it a second ago. It's not that bad, dude. I threw just this morning before I streamed, I didn't. Luckily, I didn't have to stream this morning. Yeah, or yeah. I didn't have to the stream this morning. <laughs> it's so. yeah. Um. Well, all right. And then last last topic that I wanted to ask you about really quick. You're an ancient astronaut theorist. What is what is your theory? Do you do you have a theory on ancient? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've Inside got a pro joke for for my Twitter my Twitter family yes. i like asked a tweet once where i was like where does school to mm -hmm. become an ancient astronaut theorist i know can yeah. i just call myself an ast ancient astronaut theorist mm -hmm. and I th <laughs> i'm just going to call myself an ancient astronaut theorist yes I like it, man. Astronaut theorist. Boom. It sounds so official, Aliens. too. I love that show. Yeah, me too, I man. Know. I, uh... Am I less of an ancient astronaut theorist than any of the other people on Ancient Aliens? <laughs> I know, yeah. Like, if, what is their background? I'm sure they've gone to, like, colleges for, like, 12 years or something like that. And then, like, how do Alien you Alien theory? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I studied in uh. Where do you, what do you go to school for? Liberal like, arts. <laughs> George, the George guy with the hair, Sukalos. Like for all we know, he can have a degree in in interior design and yeah. be an ancient astronaut theorist. Mm -hmm. Dude, they've got some crazy awesome people astronaut in there. Astronaut theorist. They have like the show. They'll like take everything. They're like, did the inventor of water bottles have some kind of ancient technology that we had no clue? About? Yeah, they do definitely <laughs> stretch it. I agree. <laughs> But it's, it's still looked right. I'm sitting there like, yeah, maybe he did. You're right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I know that show's freaking. It's insane. Greasy gamer asked if we could raid you. How? Um, but you don't stream for time. When when you streaming? You Four stream twenty every day. So yeah. Four twenty every day. Maybe we could fire this thing back up and just raid your channel whenever you get get live, man. But yeah, you start I, uh, singing or screaming around five or so. There you go, man. Okay, I did a uh, my intro. Uh, I did like a I I sing metal or scream. I've been tempted to. I don't know, but uh, I posted a video of me doing like the the scream for like the intro video, and people are like, "How do you do it? You sound so soft spoken. How do you scream or whatever?" Do you get that personally yourself? Because you're a very soft spoken person. Like you're 
you know what I mean? Nobody believes. Yeah. So I have a lot of <laughs> friends that and and people I know that uh, don't know me from the band. Yeah. So tell them I'm the singer of a heavy metal band. I'm like, what? Yeah. Did well, that... you? <laughs> it's it's freaking awesome, man. I know, like the first time that anybody like. A friend of mine that doesn't know me for music will see me like play a live show. They're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Dude, it just, it just happens." But that's freaking awesome. Greasy said, "Can we get a sample?" I don't know. I don't know. How would you like do it? Um, hmm. Are you talking to Mark? Can you do I'll a metal screen for us? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure. <laughs> what you? Ah, ah. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Blokes, gold, cause go on a roast. Can you sing that song? Dude, who's the, who's the band you were playing the other day? That a uh, caveman? Caveman They're something. Epic. Dude, that guy's scream. That's top notch. <laughs> it was freaking awesome, dude. Uh, Kitten said, wait. Yeah, it, uh, dude, I swear. Freaking hilarious, man. But, um, all right. Well, and when can we expect to see your freaking uh, Colonial Chick-fil-A video? Are you going to stream that? or You know, I've been told I can't do it too close to Halloween, so um, hopefully next week. There you go. Yeah, because then it would look, you know, almost like you're trying to do something Halloween. And interesting then, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just need to walk in in the full-on George Washington outfit before yes. Halloween. Mm-hmm. Do we – uh? We were playing a show one time at this place called Springwater in Nashville, and it was uh, we were about to – we were going on tour, and it was like our first show. So it was like our hometown show, and it was right before Halloween, but it was like a week and a half, two weeks before Halloween. And uh, so we dressed like ridiculous. It wasn't Halloween costumes. It was just like I was wearing a dickie on the outside, like a, a ridiculous hat, and like my, uh, my drummer was wearing like a wig, and he normally has like – you know, really short hair. He had like curly blonde wig and like ridiculous glasses. We were like dressed up, like looking ridiculous and nobody said anything to us because like it wasn't anybody else's Halloween show. It was like, we're just going to celebrate Halloween here in Nashville. Nobody even like acknowledged it. Nick's like my drummer was wearing like this long curly wig and like these little tiny glasses. <laughs> nobody said anything. Though, so it's all that matters, right? Mm hmm. Dude, and then after the show, he took his wig and stuff off, and people are like, are you playing tonight? Are you, are you playing tonight? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty awesome. But all right, man. Well, dude, thank you so freaking much for coming by. And again, you stream uh, every day, 420 on Twitch, and then you're doing morning streams as well too, right? That's going to actually move to 8 a.m. now. We were doing it at 7, and then the, the, the stream voted to move to 8. <laughs> yeah. That'll work, man, because I'll wake up and you're streaming. I'm like, dude, he's streaming so early. I like it, though. Well, I'm up before my enemies. <laughs> you got to be. You got to be. Well, awesome, man. Um, So I'm going to shout you out again. And then, guys, do you all have anybody? All right, Mark, do you have anybody that's streaming right now that you would like us to go hit with a raid? We normally let our guest guide the raid. Uh, uh no why don't you guys go ahead because i actually have to dip out so i won't be able to take place in it um but uh i enjoy the time and thank you guys for interacting and asking great questions i appreciate it do likewise man well thank you so much for coming on again everybody mark hunter freaking chimera have thank a you guys day, so man. much take care brother yeah all right guys Freaking Mark Hunter on here. Dude, holy crap. That guy is amazing. Um, anybody in the chat, do y'all have somebody that y'all would like us to go raid out to? And we will freaking hit them with a raid. <laughs> Weren't here. Dude, for real. Mark, thank you so much for coming on here. Everybody, the new followers, thank y'all so much. My only suggestion, hit us with it. All right, music streamer. Also loose to you. All right, here we go. I'm going to pull them up really quick. Guys, let's go raid. Make somebody else's day. And, uh, yes, this will be up on uh, this will be up on YouTube later on today as well. You can vomit now. Thank you. I'm going to go in and puke right here on my stream. <laughs> Not road. Raid.
Puke, do it. Just puke already. <laughs> All right, man. Aaron Goldberg. Freaking rating him, guys. Again, thank y'all so much for hanging out. Y'all are all amazing people. It was freaking great to get to talk to Mark today. And for real, thank you guys. This has been awesome. Have a blessed rest of your day.